So I wanted to start today by talking a little bit about what my yesterday afternoon was like. Um, Kirsten and I are going to be doing some traveling this summer. One of the changes that has gone on in our thinking as we have moved through the pandemic, we're going to be doing uh, some traveling in the summer. And so we were on the phone uh, with Alaska Airlines trying to make those arrangements. Now, Kirsten, who in years prior traveled like most of the time, it seemed like, was able to get to a certain status with Alaska Airlines. And normally she can pick up her phone and dial a special number and boom, she's talking to an agent immediately. Well, yesterday, much to our surprise, the pandemic does change lots of things. We spent 45 minutes on hold going, when are we gonna talk to someone? To plan the summer. Well, when we finally did talk to someone, we learned that other folks were waiting even longer, up to four hours to try to make plans for the future. It was a little bit of a lens into where we are at right now with one another in the midst of the pandemic. There are so many people anxious to move forward that they're waiting up to four hours on the phone to make their airline reservations. Anxious to move forward. That probably describes how a lot of us are feeling right now. This past year of pandemic put the brakes on so many things and with just a little bit of light and hope, everyone wants to dash forward in one giant mob. And even though that pent up energy is a good thing to be expressed, it does set up a clash a clash of thought and action about what is the wisest way to actually move forward. We don't know that yet. And so in the midst of our mad dash to plan things out in the future, I think it's good for all of us to take a little bit of a deep breath and consider what is the wise and safe way to move forward. And most especially for those of us who are followers of Jesus, to remember and take into account those who might be left behind. I'm thinking especially about those who have suffered much over this past year. All those family and friends of the more than 535,000 who have died just here in the United States alone this past year. I'm thinking about those among us who, for whatever reason, might be fearful of going forward and getting a vaccine when uh, their time comes, or even if they might find a vaccine or, or trust that it would be safe for them, their family, their friends, their relatives. In our mad dash to move forward, let's not forget about those who might be left behind. Left behind because of job loss. Left behind because they will continue to suffer food insecurities. Left behind because they will continue to struggle with their mental health. Left behind because the move to trying to teach and learn in so many new and, and hybrid ways just leaves people exhausted, left behind because all of us have some deep sense of fatigue within us. Let us not forget the ways in which some might be left behind and all of us might have been changed this past year. It's important before we rush and dash out into the future 
to take a moment to breathe and reflect on what the pandemic has done to us. What kind of traumas have been inflicted upon us? And how our responses to this pandemic have been either helpful or hurtful, both to ourselves and to others. There are things we don't really know and understand yet. And so maybe waiting on the phone for a while is a nice little metaphor for what we all should be doing before we dash forward. Take a moment and wait and reflect. What's the wise and best way for us all to move forward? It's also a good time here in this transition in the pandemic. It is also a good time to, as we look back and as we look forward, to remember the psalmist's words that in the midst of great transformation and change, the Lord's goodness and mercy never stops. It also reminds us in the psalm Kirsten read today that people, you and me and all of us, can be traveling in foolish and rebellious paths. Another word of caution to take stock of where we all are at right now. It's often our great, um, what should I say? It's often our great um, tactic in life to avoid thinking about how we personally might have been or might in the future behave foolishly or rebelliously, especially when it comes to caring for one another instead of only thinking about ourselves. The psalmist goes on to say that as people travel these foolish and rebellious paths, they can draw even near to death and they don't realize it until some time it dawns on them, they cry out. And as they cry out, God continues to deliver, heal, and rescue them, for which the appropriate response is thanksgiving for God's steadfast love and wonderful works, even in the midst of human foolishness and rebelliousness. There is in the psalm a profound recognition that is wonderfully and fearfully created as we all are, that we also have a tendency toward death and foolishness. Which sets me up for this question this morning. How have we with one another followed the path toward death? And I'm not talking so much physical death, but this past year, death in our relationships with one another. Uh, death in terms of our own um, misbehavior toward ourselves or toward others. Ephesians starts out saying this, you were dead through trespasses and sins. Well, in what way have we been dead in our bending away from love toward God and love for each other this past year? How have we been dead in our trespasses and sins? And the second question I also want to ask is, is this a really important thing to get a hold of, a necessary step in order to truly understand, as Ephesians says, the gift of grace by which we have been saved. Do we need to recognize what it is we are being saved from in order to truly live in a new way? So think of this past year in your own reflections, in our own reflections. Think of this past year 
as a time through which we have walked, walked through the land of death. In what ways have we been less than what God's intention for us, or maybe our own intention for ourselves, might be? Even as we do that, though, even as we reflect fully on what this past year has done to us and what we have done to ourselves or others, in Ephesians' way of thinking, just as we start to ponder that, God enters this land of death, grabs hold of us, raises and seats us in the new places, the heavenly places, the places filled with with life. And that turn is dramatic. No matter how far down in the land of shadows we might have dwelled, God's steadfast love and mercy grabs hold of us and moves us to life anew. You were once dead, Ephesians says. By grace now, you have been saved. You know, Dying can be a messy thing. Resurrection or new life can be equally as messy. This is a delicate time, this time that we are in, this transition time from death to new life, from full-on overwhelming pandemic to at least movement towards something new and less restrictive. This is a delicate time. It's a time for compassion for ourselves and for those that are around us. Uh, another little example. Yesterday, um, Ken, our, our youngest, and Kirsten uh, went to the store uh, to the QFC. Ken has been inside a business um, maybe twice in this last year. Uh, maybe the grocery store once in this past year. And so as Kirsten was telling me the story, they went around and they were selecting things, and Ken had difficulty making decisions about what kind of bread he might want. Uh, he had difficulty making eye contact with the people behind the deli counter or the cashier. It was really difficult for him in the midst of all of this stuff to focus and say yes or no. It's a time for us to really begin to come to grips with how disorienting these next weeks and months might be for us. And in that disorientation, be warned that we might not make the best decisions. And with one another, one, be filled with compassion, but two, also be open to guidance and correction from one another for the safety and well-being of all. In our mad dash forward, this is not a time to turn a blind eye to our own safety and well-being and the safety and well-being of others. Like Ephesians, the gospel reading also uses this raised up or, or lifted up to new life imagery. And so in John's gospel, think of it this way. As Jesus was raised up, so too are we going to be raised up these next weeks and months. And the question is this. How do we move from the land of the dead to life in the land of light and living? And John's gospel points us out to the difficulty of this, that it is possible over this past year that we have learned to live and love the land of the dead. A sort of turned in sense, instead of being open to trusting in light and new life, that we might move forward um, with, with a lack of compassion and awareness of others. 
could be very detrimental to ourselves and to our communities. This movement from this sort of structured time of rules and regulations and guidelines, this movement into a time of greater freedoms is going to be messy. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be, oh, we'll just go back to the way it was. No. We are going to have to learn new things together. Get reoriented like Ken was learning to be of what it is to live in community and make thoughtful decisions and take helpful actions with one another. In the other hand, to live our freedom wisely in light and life, and not in darkness. Author uh, Thomas Long has written a lot about funerals. The author says this, in funerals, we carry the body of a saint to the place of farewell. We carry the body of a saint to the edge of mystery, and we stand there and we can commend them to the future of blessings that we can't quite see what it looks like. That's where we are at now. As much as we want to dash forward, it's time to take and place this last year in the time and context of a funeral. It's time now that we take this past year and walk it to the edge of mystery where we will bid it farewell, but look to the future with hope and wisdom. In our anxious rush to move forward over these next months, it will be important for us to have a funeral a burial for our lives as they have been, and a recognition that as resurrection comes to us, it's gonna transform us mysteriously into, into people that we don't yet fully know. And it will probably happen messily. We will all be changed, as Paul says, but we will be raised up let us live and help one another into what being raised up will look like and be like for us all. Thanks be to God. Amen.